What do you want? It's time for gear tasting. Oh, but I was gonna go to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. You can waste time with your friends when we're done with gear tasting. Fine, let's do the gear tasting. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting, where we show you what we're up to at ITS and also what we're currently evaluating. Um, today we've got a couple products that I just got in. I bought some stuff from Tactical Distributors I wanted to kind of show you, um, as well as some questions we're going to answer. So first off, let's get into the gear tasting or the actual gear that we're going to be evaluating. So I picked up a couple of things that were pretty interesting. Tactical Distributors had a Labor Day sale and uh, took advantage of it, of course, and uh, and tried to pick up a couple things. So um, the first thing that caught my eye was this uh, cloth concealment tape from a company called Pro Tapes. And we use gaffer's tape quite a bit around ITS for all the video and production work that we do. So I was really intrigued that um, Pro Tapes had come up with a gaffer's-like tape. Um, it pretty much is gaffer's tape, but it's multicam. So I like the idea of that. Um, sometimes gaffer's tape can be a bit sticky when, you, when it's... Uh, stuck to something for a long time, especially out in the heat. So I kind of wanted to, uh, to test this out to see if it would, uh, it would hold up well for taping down rigs and cleaning up straps and things like that. But um, one of the benefits of gaffer's tape is not only how strong it is, but how easily it can tear. Um, so it's a cloth tape, which is nice too. Um, you, I mean, we use it for putting cables down on the carpet. I mean, there's just a plethora of things that can be used with, uh, with gaffer's tape. If you've ever been around the film or TV industry, you'll know that it's, it's very prevalent around that area, too. Um, I used to work at a commercial photography studio back in the day, and we used the hell out of gaffer's tape, too. So it's also got a really high heat rating, too. I think it's like up to 200 degrees it can withstand. So anyway, that's one thing I picked up. Um, also, it's made in the USA, too. I like that. Another thing I picked up was the pocket shiv from SNS Precision. Um, I've always kind of been always kind of been intrigued about this little device. It's been out for a while. I saw it at Shot Show a couple years ago, but it's literally just a little. Um, it almost looks like our little lapel dagger, um, but I like it because it's blunt. Um, it comes with a little slip case, and I particularly like the the mounting device that they've come up with to actually mount this. So, if you look at some Molly webbing like this, see that their mounting system can just clip behind molly webbing. I'll try to do this here. Of course, trying to do this, not even being able to look at it is a little difficult. Let's see what I can do here. I swear it didn't take me this long earlier. Alright, so at any rate, that's the way it clips. And then you basically slip this into that there, and that's the way it secures. So you can now just use that as a as a clip. It only clips one way. Um, you know, it, it can obviously it could go vertical if you had molly webbing sewn vertical, but um, I guess that would be somewhat of a limitation. I like that it's got a nice dummy cord loop because that's very important. You know, with a small something like this too, you probably want that on a piece of dummy cord just so you don't be a dummy and lose it. So that's the little uh, pocket shiv from SNS Precision, um, also made in the U.S., which is nice. Um, and then I got a FR balaclava. This is from Arteryx. This is their assault balaclava. It's it's a FR2, which means fire resistant. Um, and I like that it's kind of got this lightweight mesh to it. Um, I've owned, owned a couple of balaclavas over the years, and I really like that this is such a lightweight fabric. And it's also a, an added bonus that it's uh, fire resistant too. But uh, at any rate, I haven't even tried this on yet. So, Another thing I was Rob and I were remarking at is that it kind of looks like I I purchased a burglar kit from uh, from tactical distributors. I got the duct tape and the uh, balaclava and a knife. So, but anyway, this is kind of interesting too. Is you could pull the the top off of it and still have this. So if you're wearing a helmet or something like that, um, 
it makes it pretty easy to uh, to do that as well. So at any rate, checking that out. I already like that it's lightweight. I could feel that for sure. So it's one of the big deals with balaclavas is you typically get hot in those if you had to wear them, uh, you know, in the in the heat. So if you weren't wearing them for, you know, obviously wind protection in the elements like cold weather. So check those out from Arterix. Um, these are made in El Salvador. That's from Arterix. And then also, I picked up uh, this Flash 15 pack from REI. Um, so we've been preparing for the ITS muster, which is our annual skill set development week um, that we put together each year. This is now the fourth fourth year we've been doing it. I almost got uh, confused with that. So this is the, uh, the fourth annual ITS muster. And for this year, what we've asked the students to do, or the attendees, is to have something for a bolt bag. So this, a smaller pack would go into their larger pack so that if they had to grab something and go, um, they could pull this out of that larger pack and have a bolt bag that they could grab. So I started looking at some different commercially available bolt bags that are out there and I was really drawn to this Flash 15 so I got one to check out. Um, I like that, you know, as a whole, it's very lightweight. You know, you can compress it down pretty small. I like that the shoulder straps are very lightweight too. Um, and it's got a nice cinch top to it. But it also acts as a, uh, a water bladder. So I like that the inside, let me pull this out here. Let's see what's going on in the interior. So the interior has got a dedicated water bladder pocket and a little clip to hold the water bladder. But then it's got a pass through right here, a little water icon, to get into there. And then the other side has got a little mesh zipper pocket, which I need to put some paracord there instead of that little annoying loud zipper. But it's also got a little retention clip in there too. So again, that's the Flash 15. This is made in China from REI. Comes in a couple of different colors, but. I do like how, how versatile it is. One thing too that I noticed that I wanted to note is that when you're wearing this, the waist strap comes up pretty high and this is the max adjustment on the waist strap. So as you can see, if you're a bigger guy, there's not much there. So you would have to either fashion a new, you know, do some kind of extension with these clips um, if you wanted the waist strap on it. Then it's also got a strap here with a whistle, which I like. And that can move up and down on these straps. So that's the Flash 15 from REI. Um, one more thing, this is supposed to be a, a, a tool loop. And they've got this, this webbing that's sewn down in intervals here on the sides. So Flash 18, I think I was calling it the 15. Flash 18 from REI. So let's get into some questions. Okay, so welcome to questions over coffee. The first question we have is from Benjamin on Twitter that said, in light of, pun intended, your IR lights on your FJ in episode five of gear tasting, what night vision gear do you suggest? Um, well, that's a pretty elaborate question. Um, I will first try to approach it from the aspect of what I'm using the IR lights on my FJ for, which is driving. So. My goal is to take the two PVS 14s that I have and be able to bridge mount those to a helmet, which this is my current helmet I've been working with, um, and then use those two night vision devices to drive at night. So um, first I want to go over a couple things on the helmet. I want to talk about the night vision devices and then kind of some accessories that you might um, need if you're going to really get into this. So um, first off, the, the two PVS 14s I have have been modified a little bit and I'd like to kind of talk about that. Um, first off, I got a PVS 14 originally from a buddy and it was a good buy. Um, I knew the guy, I knew the history of the tube because it's very important if you're buying a PVS 14 or any kind of night vision device is to, is to know the kind of tube it has, know the care that's been taken with it, um, and to also look for imperfections in the, in the actual tube itself, which you can do by turning it on and actually looking through it to see if there's a bunch of uh, dirt and spots and things like that. So um, these are all Gen 3 um, night vision PVS-14s. So as I was mentioning, I had the first one, um, which 
I believe came from LaRue when LaRue, I don't know if LaRue still sells PVS 14s, but at any rate, I got this from a buddy and, and then I learned, I was at a hog hunt with a company called Night Optics USA and I really got to learn a lot about night vision. It was one of the most informational and educational experiences I've ever had with, with learning something, um, especially night vision. Um, so I was able to talk to the guy there um, that I've kind of become good friends with and he was telling me about how if you're trying to take two PVS 14s and run them together you really need to have matched tubes um, and I, I might be screwing this up but I believe the reason that you need matched tubes is because it can actually give you headaches if the tubes aren't um, and I'm gonna mess the word up um, but anyway if they're not matched and they're not right you can actually get a headache from looking through two different perspectives I guess is a way to say it so I sent this original PBS 14 into him when I purchased a second one and they were able to match the tubes so I do have matched tubes um, you know I had him uh, the guy at night optics who's a professional and does this stuff all the time so I actually had him match the tubes so um, I do know my PVSs are matched. So I just do not have a bridge mount yet. They're kind of pricey, and I was waiting for Wilcox to come out with theirs, um, which the last SHOT Show in January of this year, um, Wilcox released it, and now it's finally starting to become available on TNVC. Um, TNVC is a tactical night vision company, and I'd highly recommend getting all your night vision stuff through them. They're a great company, um, U.S.-based manufacturing and employees, and I just highly suggest you not only use them for your night vision purchases, but sign up for their newsletter. They share all kinds of tips. Um, watch their videos on YouTube. I can't recommend that company enough when it comes to night vision stuff. They really know what they're talking about. So um, one thing that I have done when I talked about the customization for these PVSs, um, I got the tip a while back from a couple of buddies of mine that to run the amber filters. These are Wilcox amber filters. So it takes the the green that's typically in a night vision device and changes it to an amber. Um, I believe that it's beneficial because it picks up more contrast in colors. So the green doesn't have as much contrast as the amber filter. I may be screwing that up, so I'm going to research that and make sure that I'm telling you the right thing too. Uh, if not, I'll put a little note on the YouTube video. But at any rate, I'm running those in the back, so those are amber filters. And then I've made some modifications um, to the front. So the front, I've got a, a, sacrificial, lens, a sacrificial lens from Wilcox. Um, it's in the front and this actually screws into the front and I've got these on both devices so that's a sacrificial lens so I'm not actually so any damage that occurs um, you know something hits the front or dust and stuff like that gets in it's not actually on the 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 actual aperture the uh, the optic itself so those are on there and then what I've done is I've modified the the caps or the dust covers which they have a little point or a little hole, a pinhole in the front so that you can view these in daylight and you can make sure the night vision device is functioning correctly while this caps on there so you're not letting all that light in from taking the cap off. It's just a small pinhole. So what I did, and I, and I think that I learned this tip from, uh, from Wilcox too in their newsletter, is that I took um, basically hook Velcro and I glued it to the front of this cap and then I took um, loop Velcro and glued it to the body of the PVS-14. So when I'm when I'm basically looking through this, I can take this, flip it up, and store the cap on the side. So it gets the cap out of the way. It's not dangling in front of me. You know, it's not doing this number while I'm trying to wear the, the night vision device. Um, the other thing I did is I put a dummy cord on there. Um, and then also I made sure, like the original night vision that I had didn't have a dummy cord to the battery cover. So I made sure I put one there. And that's, a, that's something you can actually buy as an accessory from Wilcox too. Then I put these little split rings on there, which at when I'll show you when you hook up the night vision to a helmet. Real quick too, I also made the markings for the battery direction very visible so that I could see those not only in the dark, hopefully, but you know they're a little more visible so I know exactly which direction the battery goes in. So let me hook this up here. And this is the I think the L24. L4 mount from Wilcox that I have on here and then the J arm so basically when this is on night vision device that split ring here hooks up to this Wilcox lanyard that I have 
and clips in like this. So now that's dummy corded so that if in some freak accident, J arm or this comes unhooked, um, that's not going to fall and my $3,000 night vision device isn't going to hit the ground. So um, that's pretty important in my opinion is to always have, especially your night vision dummy corded. You know, and, and honestly, the uh, what would be more of a situation that would happen in that case is that the uh, the dovetail mount here, um, and the Wilcox is pretty good about locking in the dovetail, but the dovetail might come off of this mount, and that's what might fall. But if you've ever experienced like the Rhino mounts, like the USGI Rhino mounts, those those are pieces of crap, which is why it's better to buy good quality night vision devices, not only mounts and accessories, but you get what you pay for, especially when it comes to night vision. So keep that in mind. Um, Wilcox is uh, all manufactured in the US too, all their mounts and um, even the lanyards and things like that. So a couple other things here. Um, I'm also running on the helmet. I've got a, a mana strobe from SNS Precision. This is just an IR marker. It's also a visible strobe too, so I can go visible green. It's very bright. Um, but it's an IR strobe as well. It's got a little, uh, um, basically a vibration function to let you know you're turning on and activating the IR, which I like because in the dark you can actually feel that it's working. Um, it doesn't vibrate all the time. It's just an indicator when you turn it on. And then counterweights are important too because when you've got a heavy night vision device, especially when I start going with two PVS 14s, um, you really need a counterweight device to make sure that you're not top heavy. Um, I think that's definitely important for fatigue. So this is uh, a newer um, mount or a uh, counterweight from Opscore. They use these little small lead weights go in the back here. And I really like that. So you can change these out and actually subtract from them if you don't need that much weight. I can't remember how much the uh, how much weight is actually on there. but So that is uh, just kind of briefly how I have my helmet set up. These little uh, tabs back here. I'm still messing with these. These are for the boogie regulator goggles from Smith Optics or Smith uh, Elite. Then I've also got these little hearing protection things mounted here. I think Millspec Monkey makes these. They're on little retractors, so I always have, I know that I always have Ear Pro mounted in my helmet if I need it. So those are, uh, those are a couple of different night vision devices. Um, also wanted to mention, you know, primarily this is used, you know, it's going to be used for driving, but at the same time I'm going to be hunting with it too, so that's kind of the reason I'd be driving with those in the first place. Um, so the, bri the new bridge mount, if you look at the, uh, the height of this, um, especially in a vehicle, you want this to be as low profile as possible, and that new, new bridge mount actually allows you to rotate each of the two goggles to the side. Um, which cuts the, the profile that's visible here in half. So it's only about half the height when you rotate these away. So that's one thing I want to mention about that. Um, also use a, an IR aiming device. So this is visible and IR. This is a green visible IR or green visible light or IR light uh, for aiming because when you're shooting with night vision, typically you're not bringing the gun right up to your face and getting a getting a sight picture through an optic, uh, you're just doing point shooting. So you'd use an uh, aiming device like this to, to point shoot with. So those are just a couple things. I also use the V lights from uh, from SNS Precision. These are uh, solid, blinking, there you go, and then off, off. <laughs> I got this wrapped around so it doesn't want to work right. Um, but anyway, so these, uh, these can Velcro mount, and these are great for uh, signaling as well. So if you had a buddy you were trying to signal to, these come in IR, but you know, if you were you know, making a, uh, a buzzsaw or something like that, they're, they're great for that purpose. And then also use the, uh, the IR APALs. These are little adhesive lights. Use these to like mark a vehicle so we know where to come back to uh, if we're out hunting on, on IR or nods. So these are from APALs. So, a little long-winded answer, apologize, but there's a lot to cover when it comes to IR. Next question is from Facebook from Blake Barger, Barger, who asks, I know it's off subject, but could you show your EDC on the next Gear Taste video? Yes, let me show my EDC. Okay, so one thing I want to mention before I show my EDC is that I catch a lot of crap for what's in my pockets 
Um, just so you know, the stuff that I'm about to pull out of my pockets is what I carry every day on me. Um, sometimes I'll supplement certain things um, and add actually add to this if I'm if I've got cargo pockets on or I've got more pocket space available. So, all right, so let's start with my phone. Uh, it's iPhone 6 Plus. Just got the Apple leather case on here. Got spare mag in the pocket with my phone. I carry a Glock 43 right now. So I'm really liking the size of the Glock 43s to carry a Glock 19 all the time. Um, I picked up this Blade Tech um, case for it or a uh, holster for it. This is uh, also made in the U.S. So I'm I'm okay with this so far. Uh, I didn't didn't have the time when I first bought the Glock 43 to actually go out and get some custom Kydex made. Eventually I'm going to do that. Um, but right now this was available on Amazon Prime, so that's why I have this, um, and I like it so far too. Um, real quick, so Resco Manus is the watch I have on right now with the little Sunto Clipper Compass that we carry in the ITS store. Uh, wedding ring, this is the Fitbit Flex, I believe. And then, so in the little change pocket, my pants, I also carry the uh, Rexford Rut. If you've seen the article I did on uh, basically the box cutter, I, this is what I carry to open stuff with rather than using my knife to keep the blade sharp for defensive purposes. Um, this is the Emerson A100. Uh, we got these done with Emerson. It's got the ITS logo on them. We still have a couple of these left in the ITS store. Then, let's see, also in that little change pocket, I've got a challenge coin. It's our new challenge coin, We the People. And then in this pocket here, I've got my keys. Um, so car key for my FJ multitude of other keys, but I have them on a blade key. These are made in the U S this is what I'm, I've kind of been running my keys on right now to just check out. So that's keys. And then in this pocket, I've also got a Parker Jotter pen and a four sevens prion flashlight and some change. And then back pocket, left side, EDC kit. This is our pocket trauma kit. This is the uh, new one we've just made with the, uh, the actual soft tee wide in it. So this is vacuum sealed with a full size tourniquet. And then I carry the Hypalon concealment wallet with some pocket fuzz. <laughs> and uh, so these are coming back in stock. Don't fret. I know we've got a lot of questions about these. Um, these are in production right now, so hopefully we'll have them soon. Uh, but the benefit of the Hypalon Concealment Wallet is not only that it's made out of Hypalon, but it's also got these concealed pockets um, within the cash portion. Let me show you those real quick. So that has tools in it. So we've got a pair of flat titanium lock picks. And this is all part of our wallet entry kit that we have as well. Uh, and then we've got um, Kevlar cordage, a diamond wire saw, a quick stick and easy decoder, a handcuff shim, a ceramic razor blade, and some leader wire, stainless steel leader wire. So that's what's contained in the, uh, the actual wallet kit. So that is everything that I carry in my pockets. Um, it's quite a bit, but honestly, I've been carrying this kind of stuff for so long, it's not really even an issue. I've also got a leather belt on if you want to count that too. So in a waiting ring, I don't know if I mentioned that. So that's my EDC. Um, hope you enjoyed it, Blake. There it is. All right. So hope you enjoyed this episode of gear tasting. Um, do my little Mr. Rogers outro here, put everything back on. Um, so send us your gear related questions. Just use the pound tag gear tasting on Twitter or any other social media, and we will find your questions and get them on the air. Thanks for watching.